Jeremy, why did you want to extend your contract through 2023? Oh, well, obviously this is, uh, this is, this is where I, where I, where I want to be. I don't, I don't know if uh, there'd be anywhere else that I would, would rather be than, than here. Uh, this is where, uh, where I played the majority of my career and, and got an opportunity to, uh, to get into football operations. And then, um, you know, we're real thankful for, uh, for Craig to uh, give me an opportunity to be the GM and, and, uh, you know, even even more of a factor, my, my whole family is uh, is here, right? So, why did you want to extend Craig Dickinson through twenty twenty three as well? Yeah, I mean, I I uh, I feel very good about Craig as our head coach, and uh, it's it's uh, somebody that I wanted to uh, to join me for for the same length. It was important to me to to keep uh, to cr keep Craig in 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 uh, catch one with us. Felt like he uh, he's done a, just an exceptional job. Not only in his first year as, as a coach, but also this off season going through the uh, the challenges that we faced um, this off season. He's just been uh, been awesome. Spent a lot of time up here uh, with me, and, and we spent a lot a lot of time together uh, going through our team and and uh, and and also his work with with our coaching staff. Um, you know, it speaks a lot about a, a head coach when uh, when all the staff comes back and and wants to be back under the circumstances. What are the what are the benefits, Jeremy, of having yours and Craig's contract being the same length? Um, I mean, just just some continuity that, that that's there. I think um, you know, I think that it just means that uh, that that Craig Reynolds believes in me, and and uh, and I believe in Craig Dickinson, right? So, um, you know, I think that's uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Is is uh, that that. Uh, um, you know, I want Craig to be our head coach moving forward. And, and uh, I was able to uh, uh, let him know that and, and we were able to work through it. And, and uh, he, the feeling was mutual. Uh, Craig loves Saskatchewan and, and, uh, and, and didn't, didn't want to look anywhere else, I guess. Hey, Jeremy, uh, Craig spoke to this a while back, but uh, he, he mentioned he'd like to get Cody uh, under contract for a significant duration. How much of, our, of a priority is that now for you? Um, well, you always want to try to uh, retain your starting quarterback. Um, so obviously, uh, it, is a, it is a priority for us uh, to try to extend court, uh, to, to, to extend Cody. Um, you know, I think that this, this, this off season is probably like no other year where we didn't have a season uh, to, uh, to evaluate players on. Um, and, uh, and let's face it, there's, there's some unknowns that we, we don't know moving forward. So um, we've, we've had discussions. We'll continue to have discussions uh, with Cody moving forward. And, uh, and hopefully we can continue to, uh, to, to have good conversations moving forward. And, and uh, we'd like to, work on an extension with them that we've, we've been discussing. How optimistic are you that those discussions will prove fruitful? Uh, it's hard, hard to tell, to be quite honest. Um, you know, we're just getting into those discussions now with, with him. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that the nice part is we have a good starting point of uh, we'd like him to be here and he would like to be here. That's, that's, uh, that's always a good thing. Uh, again, the, um, the tougher part is is to seeing where that contract should be and and uh, and where you can go with it with with the unknowns. It's uh, as I said before, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, challenges that we're facing uh, this off season and a lot and a lot of those unknowns that uh, that uh, that we'll have to work through and and, and hopefully come to a, a common ground. Has there been talk of a quarterback cap across the league? Not to my not to my knowledge, Rob. I haven't had any discussions uh, from. From my level, so um, that'd be more of a, a, a question for for the league or or the PA, but um, it definitely hasn't been on, at my level. Awesome! Thanks so much, Jeremy. Jeremy, congratulations! Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Hey, Jeremy. Hey. Um, congrats on the extension. When we heard from Cody a few weeks back at the Great Cup Unite Week, he mentioned that he'd been offered a three-year contract extension before, but wanted to maybe hold off because he didn't want to commit because of NFL opportunities. Is that something that is maybe um, coming in the way of extending him longer than you want to. Um, I think we're in. We're, we're uh, thanks, Claire, for that. By the way, um, I think we're we're probably uh, in a different uh, different environment now than than what we were at that point. I, um, 
you know, not having last year uh, to play and, and to evaluate, um, you know, I think, uh, I think maybe a little bit more open to, uh, to extending uh, ver longer than he, than he currently is. Again, I don't want to speak for Cody uh, or put words in his mouth, but, um, you know, it's certainly, we've certainly um, exchanged messages that uh, we would like to have him here longer, longer term. And, and, uh, and he has reciprocated that. Now the question is, is whether we can come to a common ground. Um, when we saw that list of people who are becoming free agents, there's just so many on them. Kyron Moore, uh, Shaq Evans. Where are you um, at with some of those contract extensions right now? Well, we've had a whole whopping one week to discuss with those guys um, their, uh, their, their free agency. So uh, we're, we're, we're working through them. Um, there's, a, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of talk with agents that's been going on this, this past week and, and uh, a lot of talk with players and, 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 and sharing with them the, uh, the environment that we're, that we're dealing with. And, and uh, um, you know, we're, we're also talking to some players that are currently under contract. So um, those, those discussions are ongoing. Um, you know, our, our free agents, our, our plan for, for our season next year is really to try to get back as, as many of our guys as, as we can from, uh, from last year. We, we don't have uh, any more information uh, from 2020 uh, because they, we didn't get to play or go to training camp and no cuts were made. And uh, so we feel good about our guys. Um, they're they're going to have to understand our environment and, uh, and they, and they got to want to come back. And, and those discussions have been going, they've been going very well. Um, and I'd look, I'd look to uh, the next coming weeks before we'll, we'll start having some announcements. Does anything change with regards to, I, I know you always want to win a great cup, but the fact that you won't be hosting now in 2021 and it will be in 2022, do you um, target contracts in a different way, just given, you know, that shift? Um, I think, I think what you see is, is sometimes it's dependent on the situation. I think that with some of the unknowns that we're facing right now, Claire, I think um, that will have uh some kind of an impact on the length of the contracts that you'll see coming through. Um, it, and it just, just depends on, on the player where they're at in their career as well. If they have aspirations to try to go down uh, to the NFL or, or if they, um, they just understand the, the environment that, that we're, we're in facing now and they just want a one year deal to see, uh, to see how it shakes down. So it'll be impacted a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Derek. Yeah. Murray here. What, what, attributes to you and Craig have that work together that have melded together so quickly with a I know you had some experience as a GM you had a rookie first first year head coach what worked together so well with you two um you know I, I think um I guess you know being being compatible with your your head coach or, or being able to work with your head coach is pretty important but um we're, we're pretty like-minded in, in what we want from our players um kind of what we want on the field um how we see players um, how we evaluate players, uh, and then and then really his coaching style fits just fits with me of, of how he communicates with the players. Um, everyone always uh, would, would look at Craig and say that he's a players coach, and and, and that's great. I, I believe that our players want to play for him as well as each other, which is which is a big a big factor when you're when you're talking about a head coach. But but even the way uh, coach holds players accountable, um, stuff you wouldn't see. Uh, on a normally on, on a normal day to day basis, but just does an excellent job, and and uh, we we enjoy working with you, with each other. We uh, we get along well. Um, it's not about uh, being friends with each other that, that makes it the most important, but it it certainly helps that we have a strong relationship with each other. Uh, and I sh I certainly appreciate the the work that he does and and the commitment that he shows our organization, and and how he uh, how he treats our players. Would you like to have played for him as a player? Yeah, he'd be a he. He definitely would be a guy that I'd like to play with. Um, you know, he uh, he just uh, he puts your he puts himself on the level of the players. He understands our, our guys and what they're going through, um, and uh, you know he listens to our guys when when uh, uh, when they want to uh, speak their opinion. He he listens to it and understands it and does a heck of a job communicating and and uh, is fair fair but firm. I'd say. What are, the question I've you're talking about resigning free agents and your players. Do you know what level the salary cap's going to be at 20 for 21? Has that been settled on? Uh, for this upcoming season, uh, my directive from, from our, from our president, Craig is, is that we'll be spending less than we did in, in 2020. So 
uh, we will have less money to spend on player salaries uh, moving forward. And, and I, I don't think uh, that that's a, you know, I don't think it's a terrible ask uh, from from our organization to ask us to do that with uh, with the impact that uh, the pandemic has had on our organization. And, um, you know, let's face it, it's it's not just the, the players that are being impacted, the coaches and, and the staff have all been impacted as well. So that means like there's been talk of going to the floor, which is like 400,000 or 400, 4, 4 million, and the, it won't pay you to the, to the top level, 5.35 would be more towards that level, towards the lower level then? Um, you know, I, I don't think I'll get into the details of exactly what I have to spend, Murray, but um, I, I don't think it's hard to figure out that it's in between the, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be no lower than the floor and, and no higher than the max. So, um, but I have been directed to, uh, to spend less than what we have in the past. Um, Jeremy, it's Jim Morris. I work with the CFL website. First of all, congratulations on the contract extension. Um, you've talked about the unknowns. What will be the challenges this year on the field? You're going to have a lot of players who didn't play for a, over a year. Some of the older players, maybe a long time, the younger players, maybe a year less development. What are going to be the challenges that way of putting like a team together? I mean, all the other teams are in the same predicament, I know, but mm -hmm. how do you see that? Well, thanks, Jim. Um, I think, um, you know, it is, is, it is something that we think about, um, but it's something that you really can't control of, of, uh, of how, how hard the, the players are working in the off season and, and the, the challenge of the players, uh, how they're going to look when they come back. And I think, um, you know, the, the one concern that we do have is, is, is really injuries, right? So they've had a full year where they haven't had contact football and uh, their bodies are usually used to having playing football in a year and, and uh, being off of, of, of the field for that long a time, that's, that's something that we're, we're, uh, we're going to be watching and monitoring of, of how we control practice and, and uh, you know, how we can make sure that our guys are eased back into, uh, into, into playing football. So it will be a concern. Um, the other question that we always have in this is, is, uh, is, is what their players that are, that are getting older there in age, um, you, you sometimes wonder um, uh, at what point uh, will their play start to, uh, to, to diminish, right? So for us to uh, look at our roster, um, you have to evaluate that as well. Uh, and, and there's also a theory from, from uh, I know I would have had the theory in my, my older age that uh, that off season gave me another year to work out and I feel better than I ever have, right? So um, we do have to be uh, leery of that. And then also uh, playing in the, the, the factor that we're only, uh, we're going to have a reduced amount of, of, of salaries to pay the players. Uh, that will all come into uh, factor when we're, when we're going through these negotiations with players. One more quick question. Um, you've talked about several times the uncertainty of going into this season. How important is it to have the consistency of you and the coach, do you think, uh, in that? So to deal with that, the uncertainties you're going to be having. So you're not making it in coaching and new coaches and figuring out a new management. Well, I think it's going to be magnified this year compared to other years. Um, going in with a consistent uh, voice uh, with Coach Dickinson uh, being our coach and then also uh, maintaining the, the same uh, consistency at, at, the, uh, at, the, at the positions. Um, I think that's going to be uh, pretty important because you're right. We're going to, we're, I would imagine we're going to face some, some challenges and some, some difference, uh, differences in how we manage the team and, and, and different guidelines that we'll have to follow. So um, I think that would be good knowing that the players aren't going to have to learn uh, how, how their coaches coach already. They already have an indication of, of how that's going to happen. Maybe it takes a little bit of the, uh, uh, the learning curve out of it. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Jeremy, congratulations on the extension. Uh, I just want to know kind of how tough is it going to be for you to tell some of these guys that they're probably going to have to take a pay cut this year with everything. And you expect to maybe lose some players because they might not be willing to do that. Um, I can only comment on, on where we're at right now, I guess. Um, first of all, your, your first question is, is, um, is uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't look forward to having those conversations with our guys um, I didn't look forward to having it with our with our staff uh, or our coaches to be honest with you um, but I think uh, with having to go through this whole uh, this whole all these challenges is, is that I think that the majority of our guys uh, know that it's that it's coming they understand uh, the situation that we're in 
And to be quite honest, um, you know, everyone's going to have to pitch in. Everyone's had to sacrifice uh, to get us to the point we're at. And, um, you know, we're, we, uh, we hope that they're, they're all um, open to it. And uh, to this point, uh, everyone that we've spoken to understand that and they're all committed to, uh, to helping us out. So they've been positive conversations. Um, I don't want to get into the individual conversations, but as a, as a whole, they've been, they've been uh, very re receptive to, and, and understanding. Look, it's not, uh, it's not like a normal uh, off season where if I was calling to ask for a pay cut, there would be more like explanation needed. Um, I think the, they understand the situation that we're in and why we're asking what we're asking them to do. And does, does the closure of the Canada U S border have any effect on these sort of negotiations or no, not really. Um, not at the, not at the current time. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're assuming that that's all going to get worked out, uh, moving forward. So, um, right now it's not something that's, uh, playing into the factor either way. Then I guess uh, finally for me is how, how's it feel to finally get back to doing the football operations? There was the pause and everything to finally get back to start doing this and planning for 20. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you asking that. Cause it, it's great. I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's been, uh, it's very, been very fast this last week been uh it's been a lot of work but we um I, i'm happy to be back it feels like we're getting back to norm uh to the normal i i can say that uh i was i, I got tired midweek which was was it was nice to be tired from uh from from doing all the work so it is uh it is nice to be back talking football it's nice to be able to get back on the phone with the players um it's nice to hear all their voices to see how they're doing uh to see how their families are doing and, and to talk a little bit about football and, and, to, and to be optimistic about uh, getting back on the field. Jerry, I just want to ask you, has Craig ever told you to cut back on salaries before till this year? Has there ever been a discussion? No, in my, uh, my whole one year of experience, uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I've, I've been, obviously I've been, I've been involved with football ops and, and the, uh, the salary cap for, uh, for a number of years, uh, and I, I think uh, that this is just uh, the circumstances that we're dealing with. So this is the this is the first time that uh, that I've been directed that we have to spend less on player salaries. Do you look at twenty eight free agents and go, "Whew, that's a long list"? Or is that... no, I I, uh, I I don't uh, I don't look at it as as that. Um, you know, I, I think um, every year is different, but um, you know, I, I think. Just with the, and we've talked about this in the past with, you know, with one year contracts and, and uh, with the salary cap in place, there is a lot of uh, guys that sign one year deals and, and uh, really just uh, this year, I'm not, uh, this wouldn't be a year where I would look at it and think it's daunting. I'm, I'm just so excited just to get back working again with, uh, with the players and having the ability to re-sign them. You also have the second least amount of free agents in the league. Is that the result of what you'd done last off season. I know you couldn't have anticipated this last November or December, but is that just fortunate it worked out that way? Yeah, I think it just, uh, I mean, it just turned out that way. Those guys that we extended for, uh, for two years were, were willing to stay with a little bit longer term. And, um, you know, certainly at the time we, we, our strategy was to try to, to get them to a longer one. Uh, and it just kind of worked. I mean, I shouldn't say it worked out. We didn't know that there was going to be a pandemic and, we would be in the circumstance, but um, it's just kind of worked out that way, Murray. I've had people ask you about the status of Cameron Judge, Brett Lowther, and John Ryan. They, they didn't show up on the CFL free agent list, but I understand they are free agents. Or can you explain that? that yeah, a... so they opted out. So we we uh, we retain their their rights until uh, until free agency. So. Uh, technically, they are pending free agents that that opted out, um, but they don't they don't have the ability to uh, to discuss it with other teams uh, just to discuss other teams uh, until uh, the free agency period. So it was uh, some something in our agreement that um, provided us some protection so that we were able to talk to our own guys if they didn't get picked up in the NFL. Is that the same with Dakota Shepley? Or has his status changed now that he played the other night or was on the roster? Uh, yeah. Shepley's, uh, yeah, he was he was on the roster, so his his status is is a bit different. Um, he opted out and got signed, and um, you know we would still retain his rights for for an amount of time. Thanks, Jer. Yeah, Jeremy, what do you think a twenty twenty one season is is going to look like? There's so many variables. Do you envision training camp being able to begin on time? Is this 
you think the schedule will unfold as written or are there 15 contingencies that you're looking at right now? Well, um, the, the plan right now is, is, is for everything to go accordingly. And, uh, you know, there, we continue to prepare for, for different situations that come, but, um, you know, I think we're going to get some more information, uh, moving in the next couple of months where we could probably, um, narrow those, uh, those exercises down. Um, if you spend, if I spend too much time, uh, thinking about all the different scenarios that could happen, then, um, you might be wasting a little time with, and other than, uh, uh, once you kind of know uh, the environment we're going to be in and then just focusing in on that environment. So uh, from us, we're, we're trying to learn a lot from, uh, from other leagues as well, um, from watching and, and learning from how they, they are, um, are dealing with this whole situation um, and really just monitoring that. And then, you know, the, the bigger discussions uh, are, are happening at the league level um, and we'll get some directive from that. So, we're, um, we're, we're preparing, but we're not trying to, um, you know, have 10 different scenarios in our mind. And, uh, but we are starting to prepare from, for some of the differences we'll be dealing with. Jeremy, other teams have done 10 coaches, nine coaches, six coaches. Why was 10 the right number for, for you guys? Well, uh, good question. Uh, thanks for asking that. So what you see now is you, you're, you're right. You're seeing some, some differences in, in the, uh, the number of coaches per team. Um, you know, I think uh, in our case, it, it really came down to our philosophy, uh, both myself and, and uh, Craig's philosophy of, of how we wanted to set up our coaching staff. Um, to be quite honest, and, and a lot of it is, is based off our football operations cap, right? So much like... Um, much like uh, understanding and uh, working our salary cap for players, we also have to do the same for our football ops cap. So um, those conversations come into fact when, when you're talking about extensions uh, and, and then setting up your, uh, your staff for the upcoming year because we have to live within the, the, uh, the football operations cap. So um, a lot of credit goes to, to Coach Dickinson and, and, uh, and really wanting to have uh, 10 coaches and, and to, uh, and to, uh, to keep the, the, the loss of coaches at a, at a minimal. Um, so, uh, he decided, um, that he wanted to try to keep 10 and, um, let's face it, he was part of the negotiations and, and, and part of the reason and, and helped me, uh, be able to, to retain those, those 10 coaches. Right. So, um, other, other teams, uh, everyone has their own philosophy, but, um, it's something that we will um, monitor throughout the, this year and, and the years to come if, um, if there's an impact uh, of us having an extra coach or an extra two coaches uh, versus some of the other teams. So uh, we chose to go with, uh, with extra coaches, and um, we hope that that's going to help us. Uh, we feel like they're an important piece of, of, our, of our team, and, and uh, that was the philosophy that we wanted to stick to. What do you feel like you will get with having 10 coaches versus nine? Like I just, if you can explain a little bit about what, what that has the potential to do. Well, I mean, if you, if you're, uh, if you're looking at just from a workload standpoint, when you have more people, you can do more work, right? So it allows you uh, to, to do more work and, um, uh, and, and, and also pull some work off the coordinators, uh, table off their job right so it'll allow us to focus uh, on the areas that are most important um, no different than than any business um, usually the, the more people you have the more creative and the more more things that you can do so um, really those guys will help assist but also um, you know being on the field as far as working with the players and doing individual um, you know having enough position coaches that will work on the field and work on those technical uh, skills of our players is, is important to us. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Jeremy, uh, Tim Prinson was expected to be the running backs coach in 2020. He's not on the coaching uh, staff for 2021. Is that just the unfortunate kind of result of COVID and you had to make some cuts? Uh, yeah, more of more of um, just our our, uh, our football operations cap, and and it just wasn't financially possible for us to keep all eleven coming back. Um, so we were impacted. I don't want to make it sound like we weren't, um, but um, 
we were impacted by one. Unfortunately, we weren't able to bring back to bring back Tim, um, but we retained the the other ten coaches.